Paul, no I've got a, a few questions fans are sent if that's alright yep. uh, for, for the new boy uh, what, what sort of system would you say suits your game anything in particular for um, your strengths <clears throat> majority of the time I've I've played a 4-4-2 uh, um, so I, I, you know, I sort of like to play that one well 4-3-3 um, three, three I've played in a few times um, and uh, you know it's quite good to be the, the focal point of the of the three um, gives you a lot more chance to get in the box and get on the end of crosses but if I had to pick one I'd say a 4 4 I've pro- probably played that majority of the time in my career Yeah you said earlier that you sort of wanted just a bit more time so you told the manager sort of not to put all your eggs in one basket really but what, what actually made you decide in the end to come to Cheltenham what was the sort of was there anything key that made you change your, change your Well mind? the manager played a big part um, you know when a manager asks about you once and uh, you know you, you think some, he's got a bit of faith in you but when he comes back again and asks again then you know you, you really think you know, the manager likes you and rates you so I think that's a, that's a massive part he, he played a massive part in bringing me here um, I played against these teams before and always been sort of impressed with how they play so you know, that, that was probably one of the one of the key reasons why yep. coming down okay. do, you, do you have any superstitions before a game? not, not really no I mean I've, I don't know whether it's uh, whether it's a superstition or just just a habit, but I always I always like to stick on my right boot before my left boot. But I think that's just a, a habit. It's not really a yeah. superstition. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your realistic target at Cheltenham? Promotion. Um, as, as a team, that's that's my realistic target. Uh, personally, try and score as many goals as I can. I mean, I'm, I think I'm here for what is it? Six, Eighteen games. Eighteen games. So you know, I'd like to get into double figures. That's, yeah. that's my personal target. Yeah, that's answered another one of the questions uh, about goal target. Um, what, what's your perfect Sunday? Something completely different. Perfect Sunday, <laughs> um, a lie-in, which will never happen with my kids. <laughs> so that, uh, but um, you know, a lie-in, probably to the well, by lie-in, I say about nine o'clock. That's a lie-in for me. So um, read the papers. Uh, I would say a fry-up, but for my just out there, I'll say uh, you know, a nice healthy breakfast. Um, and then feet up for a little while and then out for a Sunday roast, probably about two-ish and then uh, back home for the footy and watch that and then, you know, just um, probably relax with the missus and a bit of playtime with the kids and uh, maybe a film to end the day. Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, what's it like playing for Paolo Di Canio? It's, a, it's an experience, um, certainly that. He's a, he's, a, he's a great manager, you know. I've, um, I've learned a lot from, from the year I've, I've been playing, uh, playing under him. Coach-wise and manager-wise, he's uh, probably one of the best I've, I've, worked, I've worked under. Um, works works really hard. Um, great character. You know, I think if he if he ever left uh, the English game, it'd be a, it'd be a loss because he's a uh, he's a great character. Great for, great for lower league football, certainly. Yeah, one fan you only only just arrived here on loan. One fan already asked if you consider a permanent deal with Cheltenham. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to anything really. Um, I always, I always go by how I, you know how I feel at a club, and if I'm happy at a club, um, and if I'm enjoying it, then you know I, I'd never see a problem with um, signing permanent. I mean, I'd, I spent five five years at Dagenham and Redbridge, and I loved every minute of it, um, and I never once you know really thought about leaving. So, you know, it doesn't matter to me about the size of the club or the support, how many supporters they get through the turnstiles. If I'm if I'm there and I'm enjoying it, I'm, I'm comfortable. Then that's that's the option. That's the decision I make. So. You know, I've got every chance I can make this move permanent if you know, if everything goes well and the manager wants me. Yeah, brilliant. Um, you've already touched on this one with saying you like four four two, but are you are you happy playing up front on your own? Have you done that much and you can, you feel like you can do a job there as a lone striker? <coughs> I've done it a few times. Um, you know, I, I don't mind it. Obviously, I like playing with a partner. I prefer that. Um, but while I was at Portsmouth, I played you know majority of the games up up top on my own. So um, I've done it a couple of times for Dagenham and Redbridge. Uh, don't. I don't think I did it for Swindon, but um, I've, I've played it a few times, but um, it's not my preference. My preference would be with a partner, someone you know, I can link with. Um, so, you know, I, I can play it, but like, like I say, it's not really, not really my preference. Yeah, you've gone from playing at Portsmouth, some of the best fans <coughs> in, in England, and but obviously a club on its knees at the moment, really. Now you're going to a club that have at the right end of the table pushing for promotion. The, fans won't, the crowds won't be as big, but hopefully they can make a bit of noise as well. But how different is that going to be going from, from Portsmouth to Cheltenham? Um, I don't, I don't think it would be a, too much of a difference. You know, like I said, I played at Dagenham and Redbridge, you were getting crowds of like 2,000, 2,500. So, um, you know, you adapt to, to what's to what surroundings you've got around you. I mean, Portsmouth, brilliant. You know, you can't, can't speak highly enough for their sport. It's unbelievable. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm used to 
you know, I, I was I spent former former years of my career playing in front of crowds of you know two and a half, three thousand. So um, you know whatever whatever you, whatever crowds you get, you know you just you just embrace it and. Um, it's it's a it's a nice tight ground at at Water Road anyway, so you know sometimes those atmospheres are, are just as good as the big stadiums, you know, with with you know a half full. So um, I think no matter what, what the, the atmosphere will be good, but as long as we're winning, you know, that's that's when the that's when the real atmosphere comes in. Yeah, that goal against Cheltenham last season it did prove crucial, didn't it? Because you kicked you kicked on and won the league really at a canter after that, and Cheltenham just had a bit of a struggle after that. So that, that was a key game. Probably. Um, it was, yeah, and we saw it as that. You know, when when in the build up to the game, we knew it was going to be a key game I think it was top versus second it was a real top of the table clash uh, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna say that if, if Cheltenham would have won the game they would have gone up and got promoted and we would have we would have slipped away I, I don't think maybe that could happen but it, it certainly helped us you know we, we got a lot of uh, got a lot of positive um, you know got a lot of positives to take from that game and it really spurred us on and uh, gave us the momentum to, to go on and eventually uh, win the league yeah Great. cheers for that